You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Being Mary Jane After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Being Mary Jane After Show. Okay. You better say it, Tiana. That was for you. <laughs> Ashley, you better sing that theme song. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the AfterBuzz After Show of Being Mary Jane on BET. Woo! Whoa! Woo! I'm excited. I'm your host, Megan Thomas, and with me I have three beautiful and very talented ladies. To my left, you are. What's up, everyone? I'm Ashley Gray. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Hey Ashley Gray. And I'm Tiana Hobson. And I'm Finia Thomas. <laughs> I was <laughs> waiting mu- for you. To- the music going away <laughs> kind of like, scared yeah, me yeah, for a second. I was like, wait, it got so quiet in my ears. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I'm trying to fix my button here. Don't, don't mind. Okay. You, <laughs> you know don't want you any it, you, wardrobe malfunctions right, you know on day you miss one. miss a button? Like, it just it messes with me. Like, <laughs> like, I missed a button hole. Okay. So, we are so excited because finally, Being Mary Jane has started the entire season. Um, we saw the movie on BET last year, which, why did I take a big break? I think that the movie was just set to be kind of one of those things where if it did well, then yeah. they'd move it forward okay. to into a series. Well, and it was I, amazing. Balls. And then, yeah, it amazing did so well. Balls. It was, you know, BTS. It, like, yeah, it was a tease. Yeah, it was a tease. Because the way they ended the movie, it was like, well, you have to follow up with right. something at right. this point. So uh, let's do this. Give me one word that describes what you thought after watching this first episode. Relatable. Ooh, I like that. Um, mm. Scandalous. Ooh. Mm. <gasps> Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I actually like that. <laughs> I'm going to say Cray because um, I really felt like Gabrielle Union in her role as Mary Jane Paul did the most. Yeah. The mostest. So we're going to get right into it. Let's start talking about Hurricane Kenny that is making landfall. And we see a lot of different dynamics with Mary Jane um, as in regards to her job, her love life, her family. In her job, it's crazy. She's expected to work with some crazy high-powered people like Kara, Kara Lynch, who is her executive Mm -hmm. producer. What do you guys think about her at her job? Do you you think she is going to burn out? Do you think it's going to last? What do you think is going to happen? I think that when people are starting off on that high of a level and they are already so, you know, go, go, go and get the job done, anything to get the job done and working that hard, that young too, Mm -hmm. because, you know, she's a young black woman who's successful so that means she's been putting in these long hours for a very long time i think it's something she's used to so she might not get burnt out from it but eventually it's gonna she's gonna realize that it's the reason why she's you know her personal life isn't where she wants it to be right i think she's conflicted and we're gonna see that a lot because it's kind of like she wanted to have integrity with the whole hurricane thing she didn't want to show the family dying she wanted to take them out and help them but at the same time you're supposed to report the news Mm -hmm. and separate yourself from what's going on and not make it personal so I just to piggyback off what you said I Mm -hmm. think it's just gonna plays into her personal life as well where there's turmoil and conflict (laughs) to put it nicely (laughs) right yeah I think there's gonna be a lot of conflict with Kara her executive producer because as you can see, Kara is all about the ratings. It, it, in the movie, Ooh, yeah. it seemed like they were really good friends. Yeah, and they, I was going to mm-hmm. say that. I thought right. they were like really great friends. Right. But obviously not. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, I think they are, but I think they're going to have some some disagreements now that the network, what is it, SCN? SNC. SNC, yes. It's not doing so well. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks mm-hmm. like now it's going to be like, look, I need my job. And, and you see that that's what Kara says. She's like, I just saved both our jobs, but Mary Jane's not too concerned about that. So I think there's going to be some more conflict. Yeah, and I think that part of the reason why they work so well together and in the movie, you know, it was all good times for them, Mm -hmm. you know, in their friendship. And I think everyone has that sort of conflict at some point with their executive producer who's, you know, you work so closely with them that you Mm -hmm. know them backwards and forwards. So you can have these kind of tiffs and come out of it okay, this particular one. 
for Mar- from Mary Jane's standpoint, it seemed like it was maybe, you know, a little too far. Yeah. That Kara went too far in Mary right. Jane's eye, and this might be the first time that that's happened in their relationship. So it'll be interesting to see moving forward how they um, react to each other and how right. it affects their friendship. Yeah. Right. And I like the quote that Mary Jane pulls off the wall. She says, some people feel the rain, others just get wet. And it was by Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. And I think it was very, what did you think that meant? Because it took me a second to kind of marinate on that. Can you repeat it? It says, some people feel the rain, others just get wet. Hmm. I think it's being in the moment. Like, mm-hmm. it's being out in the rain, which <laughs> I just have to address. It's a pinnacle <laughs> black chick. Right, right. <laughs> As Mary Jane said, it's all about edges, okay? So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which was really interesting, too. Like, it had, like, a double entendre. I'm like, well... Yeah, I'd be in the rain when I didn't have my weave in, you know. <laughs> but so it's just being in the moment and feeling it. And, you know, some people just go with it and some people stop and smell the roses, which you have to do in life. But I get Kara's sense because at some point you have to protect your job. And at what length are you willing to go to? Um, I would have I would have done what Kara did. I think that it was fine to show the family they wanted to stay. So might as well exploit them, basically, and, and keep <laughs> yeah. your job and keep your paycheck and your family and your kids fed and the roof over your head. The one thing that got me, though, was when she turned around and was like, and we just won the Emmy and high fiving people over that. Right. And then the camera has just gone black and you're like, um, excuse me, I think they just died over there right. and you're celebrating winning an <laughs> Emmy right now. And and then she, you see how Carrie goes, come on, get him back. What's going on? What's wrong? What's yeah. wrong? And then he's like, I mean, it could be water damage or whatever. And she's yeah. just like, <gasps> But it wasn't because she was concerned about the family. I'm just mm-hmm. like, dang, Kara's a heartless, <laughs> heartless yeah. chick right there. But yeah, I mean, think of all the things that she's given up to do what she's right. doing. You know, she mm-hmm. lost her marriage. She, Her children her kids you suffer. Know, suffer because she can't make it to things because she's constantly working. So I think she's in the mindset of this is my life now and I've already chosen this path. And Mary Jane's still trying to make the choice whether to go down the path of being Kara or if she wants some sort of personal life and happiness in her life on that side. Right. And I will say that, um, I mean, we see that professionally, Mary Jane seems to be doing very well. Um, Personally, she sucks. Let's just say (laughs) that. I'm sorry. You you, you just suck, my dear. Um, One of the things is that she is the emotional and the financial pillar for her family and friends. Um, The episode opens up with her and Dr. What is it? Lisa Hudson. Her home girl. Um, she rushes over to the house because Dr. Lisa is overdosed, apparently. Uh, how, do we ever know? Does it ever? Because I couldn't remember if it no. was. No. <laughs> we don't know why. No, I want to know how did she even know that Dr. Lisa was in trouble? Maybe she called her mumbling. I, I don't know. They didn't explain that. That was okay. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry. Y'all got to do better. Y'all got to. Come on, writers. Out. I love um, y'all, but and, that part. And Fani and I were talking about this. She's a doctor. And she just tried to OD. Yeah, and they did not did, yeah. put her on a 5150. <laughs> they didn't. What is 5150? That's the crazy people hoe. Yeah, that's you, a, when you commit suicide, you get a psych hold on your ass and you stay in the hospital for like 48 hours. Yeah, they can like hold you for 48 hours. Yes. But you know what? I think because remember um, what Mary Jane says to uh, her boo thing. What's his name? Um, David. David. Or Andre. Sorry. David. David. What's on top of David. David. She says that he, um, the, the paramedics just said she took the wrong drugs. So she was trying to go to sleep, but she just took too much. And I think that is probably the medical community way of covering stuff up. Like, look, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I know what's going on. I'm good. I promise you. I just took the wrong, too much of something because I was trying to go to sleep. That's it. Yeah, because you know that there's something else going on. And I was just kind of wondering, you know, you're a doctor. You're treating patients. <laughs> you have the prescription pad right. yourself. <laughs> so maybe... <laughs> right. Something should be reported to the medical board or <laughs> she's crazy. Know. Like, you know, just crazy something needs crazy. to be done to make sure she doesn't do it again. Right. And I will say, I mean, Mary Jane's a very good friend. She you see that she bust the window out. She, I mean, her she hand shoved bleeding. her fingers down her throat and made right. her throw up. That's a true friend that right is. there. That's that a true friend. She said that she washed those dishes. Mm-hmm. She made breakfast. <clears throat> I mean, that is a good friend. She left her boo monster at home. Mm-hmm. But he was still there when she got home. 
You see, I roll my eyes on that one. <laughs> we gonna get into that a little later. Um, but okay, so you see that she has to be the the sane one for her friend who seems to be a little crazy. And then you also see that with her family, Mommy Dearest is blowing up her phone, which I think is hilarious <laughs> that she has Mommy Dearest as her mm-hmm. mom's name on the phone. But it, it does describe her mom. Yeah, I call my mom Mommy Dearest. I just to, make her, yeah, just yeah. to make her mad though because Ooh, of that movie. My mother would beat the black <laughs> really? off of me. Are you serious? Right. She don't play those games. My mom's Korean, so she didn't get it. So I was like, cool. Wait, hey. what's the what's the the terminology? Like it's a movie, Jane Crawford. Right. She was a witch. She would be Mumsy. Oh, well, I call my mom Mumsy dearest, but I uh, guess oh. it's not whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic, whatever. Yes. And in the movie she makes her call her mommy dearest. So oh, right. That's why, She's you know, smart. most moms don't like to be referred to as mommy dearest. <laughs> but her mom has like Munchausen syndrome. Like she or something. She's lupus. She's, no, I'm saying oh. like she it takes it to the next level. Like yes. I, we know you got lupus, mom, <laughs> but you don't have like terminal cancer, a tumor growing out of your eyeball where you can't see, like she is really Aww. taking lupus to the next level she is she's she's very needy in her state i know? think it's adorable though she, i think it's a little <laughs> kind much of. It, it's a bit pe- it borders pestering but i mean if i was sick and stuck in a house what did she say i'm stuck up here all alone with nobody like yeah. turn on the tv but <laughs> i would probably be borderline like what are you doing what do you know how'd you do what'd you do how'd your day go when are you gonna right. see me yeah, yeah. yeah. then i'd also there? be respectful that okay you're at work so <laughs> right. if you have to go into a meeting to, you know, yeah. set up your show, then I'm going to be okay with you forgetting to call me back. Forgetting. True. <laughs> right. Air quotes on the forgetting because I think it was done on purpose. It was. Right. And and she, you see Mary Jane does the same exact thing when, uh, in the movie. Mm-hmm. She, I'm sorry, mom. I got to let you go. <laughs> I got to, I got to go. But I think her mom is a little on the borderline needy, but I think later on in this season, we're going to see, I hate to say it, but I think her mom's going to get sick, like for real, for real. And yeah. not just, I not just lupus. lupus. <laughs> because I'm, I'm saying like lupus is manageable. I know, I know a lot of people with lupus. So you know, you go through your your peaks and your valleys. Right. But her mama always in the valley. I'm just <laughs> saying, you ain't always in the valley, Miss. Uh, what's her name? What's mama? Helen name? Patterson. Miss Helen. Yes. Helen. <laughs> you ain't always in it. Okay. So then we see that um, Mary Jane also has a tumultuous love life, mm. to say the least. Um, it's exciting. <laughs> is it? What's so exciting about it? I mean, sex have, you seen, showers? have you seen those sex scenes? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I got. I was. I was. I, was I, was I, I moved myself. in my seat like, oh. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is BET, right? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How far are we going on BET? I mean, I'm. I'm excited to see how far yeah. they'll go. I'm tuning in to BET. <laughs> like, I know, right? I'm trying to check, see what's going on on the other shows. Right? She got soft porn going on. Okay, <laughs> a new day, a new day. But we see that Mary Jane um, has lit her old flame back into her life, and that's uh, played in the character of David, who is fine. Yes. I mean, everybody's mm-hmm. fine on the show, yes. almost everybody. Um, and do you think she should have let David back into her life? Because I don't know the full backstory, I'm okay with him being in her life right now. <laughs> yes. And as of right now, I think he's maybe better than a married man <laughs> well, being in your hey. life. I mean, I don't know. At least he's not married. I agree. Yeah. I think Mary Jane should be alone. I think he is. If you have, if you put, if you change someone's name in your phone to never answer, you did it what for is a it? reason. Right. That's what I'm saying. You did it for mm-hmm. a reason. So you probably shouldn't revisit that relationship. And we see that. You know, he seems to be a nice dude. He stayed around for her when she was gone to help her friend. You know, he seems really sweet. He shooed away um, Andre when he came to the gate. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Right. It, and, but then you also see the other side of it, which is he invites her to go to see Esperanza Spalding. Mm-hmm. And at the last minute, of course, she declines. And he gets another chick. Do you think that that was okay for him to do to get another chick to go see... I would go hang out with another chick or go take a chick to this concert. I think so. Me too. I, I think so. As a, if it were, if I were Mary Jane, would I be a little hurt by it? Yes, but looking at it from the outside, I think it's okay because first of all, I'm not going to let the tickets go to waste. Right. I'm going to go. <laughs> like, regardless. <laughs> and the last time I checked, most yeah. guys don't really want to see us around the spot yeah, together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Two, we are not in a relationship. He came over, asked to have consensual sex. That mm-hmm. did not mean I want to be your boyfriend. So there's no, there's, there is no talk about, you know, what, what the limitations are and who they're allowed, what they're allowed to do outside of right. each other. 
Right. And that's why I'm for her having a relationship with David. I think she needs to not blur the lines so much mm -hmm. and let it be for what it is and just casual sex and fun and hanging out and not get her emotions involved. I think she was trying to maybe get over Andre and whatever had happened. And so she caught feelings for David, which mm -hmm. we don't do. He's just your homie. You have a great time together and you do things and that's it. But I think she's not in the right emotional state to not blur the lines. I think she's such a wreck emotionally that to say that she, sh I mean, what she should do and what she is going to do is two different things because she's just not right in the head at this yeah. point. She got too much, she's, her plate is full as her, as Dr. Lisa says and she, I don't think she can see that because you even, you see what she says to him when he's like, I got these tickets. Is this a date? Yeah. I mean, I guess she's trying to clarify but first of all, you should probably back up that question and say, are we dating? Are we together or is this just sex? Like, you should probably clarify that first mm -hmm. before you clarify this other stuff because I think in her head they're building towards something because you let the dude stay over. Apparently, this ain't the only time he stayed over because remember at the end of the movie, yeah, that was after, I don't think this picks up exactly right then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it might be a couple of weeks. They've been... But they've... Right. So and she... in the movie, she called him instead of going into the diner and said, you know, next time let's plan this out. I'm not going to do this right now. Let's call it what it is. It's a booty call. So if you want to actually ask me on a date, then let's do it with day's notice and all that stuff. But now she's, you know... Getting all right. into it. I was like, well, you already called it what it was there. So now you have, you can't go back on your right. word when you said, call it what it is. It's a booty call. And now I'm going to backtrack and be like, oh, wait, no. I'm going to get right. mad at you for going with someone else. A lot of times us ladies like to try to make things into what they're not. And yeah. like, maybe we could change a little bit. Just saying. Right. And I have to, I have to give David props because he told her the truth. When he called, she's like, are you going with somebody? He could have been like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a meeting for work. He was like, I mean, yeah, like somebody that I've had sex with, I'm not going to pre be presumptuous and say we're having <laughs> sex tonight, so but I mean, it's a possibility. I'm like, yo, the dude is honest. Yes. He's honest and I got to give it to him. I agree. Because, you know, he could have lied. Absolutely. But, but I mean, he could have lied like Andre did for months. Um, but mm. he chose to tell the truth mm -mm -mm. and it was the truth she didn't want to hear. Mm -mm. And so don't ask for the truth if you can't handle it. Exactly. Right. That's what I'm saying. Why don't you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and let us know what you think about this topic. Should Mary Jane choose Andre mm. or should she choose <laughs> David? Uh, I don't really know. Just make sure you put your comments on there and tell your friends and your family to go ahead and subscribe as well. Rate and comment. Give us five stars. Five. Yeah, we're a new podcast, so make sure you give us lots of love yeah. here on After Buzz. Mm, and if you love. don't, we're just going to punch you. Just lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Okay, so on to uh, Omari Hardwick, my boyfriend, <laughs> who plays Andre Daniels in this show. Um, mm. Hold on. Did you just sigh for my man? I no. did. I'm having really inappropriate thoughts in my mind right now. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> um, so he is... I don't know what to think about this dude because... He apparently supposedly loves Mary Jane so much, yet he forgot the most important detail of all, that he's a married man. Married. Mm. Ain't that bottom line. <laughs> 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 so what do you think about, um, Let's. He, he's trying to win her back. He's trying to put the code in the gate, creep up <laughs> on her. He's stalking her, following her to get coffee. He's showing up at the gym. gym. He was everywhere. He was. When and he, he looked like a sad puppy the whole time. <laughs> he was following her around like a sad puppy. And I was like, you know what? You're better than that. Right. <laughs> like, you know, he was a handsome sad yeah, puppy. Yeah, I mean, you're a handsome mm. sad puppy. Mm. But at the same time, I was just, I had a hard time feeling bad for him because right. I was like, you look desperate now. You're the one who screwed this up, right. you know, from the start because, you know, you have a wife and a family. Right. Right. Um, so don't come crawling back now. And I want to know what happened because in the movie, when we first meet him, he's already in the doghouse with her. Right. Because they were in a fight. But I don't think we ever found out what that was all about mm -hmm. beforehand. So I wonder... Because he's probably has to, honestly, I thought it was, he probably said he was going to be somewhere, do something, and he wasn't. I mean, that's what happens Maybe. when you live a double life. Yes. You know what I mean? So I think that's probably why she was mad. I mean, the only thing I could gather. But I will say that, do you, I have to, I don't understand this. Do you guys think he really loves her? In love with her. I'll say that. Do you think he's really in love with her? I haven't seen enough mm, yet. Yeah. yeah. I don't. 
I don't think that any married man can honestly be in love with another woman if they have not left their wife. Because if you are actually in love and wanting to be with that woman, then you would break up what you have at home. And I don't, yeah, and like she said, I have to see more, but I don't think that he's in love with her. Do you think he's going to break up with her? I mean, his wife no. is his wife. No, no he's going to keep them both. He's going to try. I don't know if the wife will. Well, yeah. But, and he only said, I love you one time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's some of the things that it, his wife, Avery Daniels, brings up when she comes to, she comes to Mary Jane's when she, job. When she comes to work. <laughs> what would y'all have done if you're, the, clearly, if you were in this situation? Like, do you mm. think that Avery was wrong to no. come from her at her job? Not at all. Not at all. No. Tiana? I wouldn't have done it at her job. Shoot, I'm going to go anywhere. Your job, I'm going to church. I'm going to go anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to find you. Well, because here's my thing. Mary Jane <laughs> told her, you know, at the pet shop, you know, about the affair. Mary Jane did not know that this man was married. Mary Jane was not in the wrong here. Her husband was in the wrong. And that's so why don't she come approached to Mary, her. Yeah, and so classy. don't come to Mary Jane's job and put her whole life on the line because your husband screwed up. That's true. So that's the only reason why I'm like, eh, maybe not the Okay, not, I can kind of see it, but I like that she remained classy and she yeah. didn't get ratchet. Like, yeah. she still yes. had a respectable, classy conversation that was eloquent and, <clears throat> and very detailed. <laughs> very <Wow>. detailed. <laughs> wow. Do you do you think um, Mary Jane was right in answering all her questions? Yes. Yeah, that part I, I do I, think yeah. she did a good job with. But the thing why? is... Why do you think she should have answered her questions? Because look what, I mean, okay, not, so though? this is, yeah, the thing is, is that, you know, once Mary Jane found out what dude was married, she still continued to communicate with him. You should have ceased all communication. Hold That's on, disrespectful. No, 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 because I thought she said that my husband called, like she was looking at the yeah. call. Like, it doesn't mean that she picked up, because I was under as far the impression as we saw, she didn't pick up. Yeah, she didn't pick up. He came to her house. She didn't let him in. Oh. He was following her around. Right. She was not communicating with him because she was having fun with David. But we all know that David is a decoy and that Mary Jane still want that booty. Yeah, but You're as right. long as she's not hitting it, you know, she's right. it. I mean, she's gonna, but she's gonna at this point in time in the storyline, she's yeah. doing David to distract her from doing Andre. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and I'm, I mean, what I, I love have it. to do to keep yourself from being the other woman, yeah. you do you, okay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so I, I'm... That is, y'all are so crazy. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> but, that, but that's real. I mean, that's that's really what I think David is. Because if he's a never answer and you're entertaining a never answer, then why are you doing that? It's to keep you distracted from what you really want. And I understand why Avery would come and ask her these questions. She said she needed to know what she was up against. She yeah. said, you know, I, wanted, I said I wanted to keep him, but now I think about it. I need to know what I'm up against. And some of her questions was a little weird to me. Yeah. Mm. Like, like um, how often do, do you come? Do huh? you come? Are, your are these your real breasts? breasts? I don't know. Does like, he, it's does he go like down on you? Huge. Well, it's like, probably <laughs> because, like, their sexual life isn't what it used to be. So she's trying to figure right. out. I mean, like, I mean, mm. dang, when we in the bed, I don't, he comes, but I don't. Like, is, where is he? <laughs> he's satisfying you and he ain't satisfying me. Like, what's going on? So I mm -hmm. think that she's just trying to figure things out. And yeah, the questions may seem a little bit inappropriate however I just feel when you're in that mindset it's like I just want to know everything what color draws do you wear because obviously I, think, I need to wear those but, colors but he, here's I think to <laughs> I'm just saying because my man like your draws and not my right. I don't get it because he probably like what's in your draws that's why not if they were you, so here's the problem I have with that I don't think women should ever approach mistresses ever really here's the reason why because First of all, she didn't know about his married life. He mm -hmm. did, she didn't know, Mary Jane did not know he was a married man. Mm -hmm. So there's an issue with you, you know, Avery and your husband. That's between you and your husband. That's if true. he's straight on you, that's there's a reason why. Him straying with another woman ain't, is not gonna help you figure out why he's straight on you. Because mm -hmm. you and this woman are two different people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She's we see that Avery is very successful as well. She's mm -hmm. on the board of directors for a charity. She was a with partner. Obama. She's with President Obama. Yeah. You know, she's she's you know, pretty she's got a, a lot of stuff going on as well, just like Mary Jane. But if he's with her, there's a reason why. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you can't try to figure out, well, why is he with her and not with me? Maybe you should go, well, what has changed since the beginning of our relationship? Have I become too busy for him? Have I become so, yeah. you know, yeah. successful? I don't have time for my husband and I don't, you know, nurture our relationship. What is it between me and him? And I think if you spend the time going after your mistress, uh, excuse me, after his mistress trying to figure out what is so great about her, I think you forget what the most important piece, which is what is so great about my marriage and that it's no longer there. Yeah. And that's that, true. You know what I'm saying? So I think she was out of line. She should have probably had that conversation with her husband. If he wasn't willing to tell her, then guess what? Your marriage is over. You don't need to go ask a mistress mm-hmm. th- to answer all that stuff. Your I marriage do. is already over. I do agree with you. However, I'm just going to be completely honest. There has been times where I've broken up with a guy and then he gets with another girl. And I always wonder, like, hmm. Mm-hmm. What she got you know what? Got. You know, what is it that, you know, sparked their chemistry that... Oh, no, ours fizzled. So I just think it's a part of being human. She was just, you know, right. she just she wanted know. to know. Becoming that she is an attorney, I think she was maybe building her case and gathering all the evidence. And I would say never say never. Unless you're in that situation, you never know what you're going to do or right. how you're going to yeah. react. And especially when you have kids involved. Right. I'm going to want to know. Right. I'm going to want to know why, who, what, when, where. I might not have asked such detailed questions. Yeah. Yeah. Because that would just. And I think that Mary Jane answered them because, like she said, she has been cheated on before. So she knows what this woman is going through, all the thoughts that are going through her head right now. Mary Jane knows and understands where she's coming from. Woman. What was that? Woman to woman? It's an old song. Woman to woman. Yes. Yes. And I really don't even think it's about jealousy or trying no. to get him back. It's just you you're put in that position, you're just like, why? And you wanna know que- you wanna know answers to questions that you feel like she's going to give you. Mm-hmm. Even if she doesn't give them to you, you're but, like, I just wanna what is I gotta that? ask. Here's the question that, to me, okay, so you're sitting there as Avery and you get all these you find out that she always Mary Jane always comes with your husband. She they reciprocate, you know, sexual mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, what is so what does that tell you? It may not be He's already it's her she, pros it's, and cons list. So know? what I'm saying is like she obviously knows I guess she's trying to gauge his level of love for her for Mary Jane. I maybe Which, or maybe not. I just feel like she, it's it makes her it makes her feel better just to say that, you know, I talked to her, you know, I got these it, it they the answers may not be fulfilling, but in some sense she's satisfied just mm-hmm. being able to go to her and talk to her and get the like who really wants to know that, honestly? Like no woman wants to know <laughs> yeah. that, but it's just some some sense of satisfaction that I went to her and I talked to her. And I I mean, look at the last thing that she said to Mary Jane in that conversation was Something like, why wouldn't he? You're so good at what you do. Right. Why wouldn't he love you? Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't he love you? You're so good at what you do. So I think right. that was her just kind of coming to terms with it. You right. Know, Maybe she's trying to evaluate yeah, if she's evaluate. save the marriage or not. Because they do have kids. Right. But I don't think that should be dependent upon how your husband interacts with his mistress. I don't think that yeah. should determine whether you stay in your marriage or not. And I just feel like that was, to me, that was a bit much. And it was, I mean, she's human. She's flawed. So I think this was a flawed moment for Avery because for a woman who seems to have it all together, she clearly doesn't as well, just like Mary Jane. And I think she probably walked away a little bit of satisfaction knowing that Mary Jane has never met his friends, his family, Mm -hmm. or his children. And has never talked about a future Mm -hmm. with her. Do you think that gives her, do you think Avery walked away from that saying, okay, I should salvage this marriage or it's done? I think she walked away thinking it's done. And I think that for Mary Jane, my questions then began to be like, wait a minute, we haven't ever talked about these things. I've never met his friends or anyone. It's been four months. What? Then the the triggers mm-hmm. start registering right. in your red mind. Flags. The red flags, you know, that you weren't picking up on because you were so happy in mm-hmm. bliss that now you're like, oh, wait a minute. I've never heard him talk about family. I've never met any of his friends right. why is that happening and it's been four months but those red flags seem to like fly in the wind oh yeah in they the just shower <laughs> like well i mean <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so let's move on to the most important piece of this episode um mary jane's in the gym of course working out after she's had a crazy day at work um she sees andre and on the treadmill she immediately just leaves um she goes to take a shower. She puts her shower cap on like we all do. <laughs> and he comes in there. Where's the security? <laughs> <laughs> what gym, Mary Jane, what gym do you go to, honey, that that's okay? Where the, I don't, if, if I was that, that lady that was in the other shower, I'd be like, excuse me, sir. 
<laughs> I'd have been very upset if I had been that other woman. Right. I would have been mm-hmm. like, uh-uh, you got to go. If I would have said something or I'd have, I mm-hmm. would have just been upset. And so for he, he comes in there and he's just, you know, so <laughs> apologetic. I just had a hard time with Mary Jane being okay with this. I think it was another thing. It's been such a long emotional day that she just let her guard down and let him she needed release. She, she, needed, she needed to <laughs> she needed to release release something she. but um the f- i mean for me i was like i mean she just got off the treadmill he just got off the treadmill the treadmill I the mean, dirty public the, shower the dirty public shower i in the in the movie you know he barfed and she kissed him still i was like mary jane you're doing a lot that <laughs> i'm not that's okay love, with honey. that's love, that's love. <laughs> that is some because how did he even love. work at because you see him coming i don't i mean I, he could have been on the weights or something i don't know yeah. but i thought I got the impression he hadn't even worked out yet. So you coming in here, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm a little funky after I work out (laughs) hard. And she was running hard and at an incline. So (laughs) at an incline. That is real. Right. So I'm just sitting here like, yo, what's going on? Seriously, she is, you know, definitely, that was a lot there. Um, But a few things that he said, what is this? I'm like, it's a beat. Somebody dropping a beat. Uh Uh-oh. I think it's it's time to go. It's time to go. There we go. All right. We got it back in order. So then, of course, we see that um, when he's in the locker room, um, he's very apologetic to her. And she's just like, you know, why? Mm -hmm. He Mm -hmm. doesn't answer. Why? He doesn't. Nope. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't. He says sorry. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> right. I don't care. Okay. You are a married man. You need to take your sorry <laughs> ass out of right. this dang on funky shower. Let me clean up. And that's it. Like, I just, I have no sympathy for a married man. This is unexcusable. And you need to go home and try to salvage your marriage with your wife. I refuse to be the side chick. And now I think she's just made herself a side chick mm-hmm. because she knows that he does have a wife and she succumbed. To, uh, to me, it's like this. How that would have been the last place I would have ever thought to mm-hmm. to go ahead and cheat with a married man on. There's a, we're in a women's locker room. I'm funky as I don't know what. <laughs> I got my shower cap on. I mean, and somebody she, could walk in at any moment and, and catch she's us. She's famous. She's well known, and right. that lady walked out here in the whole conversation. Mm. She could go sell that to TMZ and you know mess up your your whole life. Right. So I just have a really huge issue with that. I just it, it was a little bit unrealistic to me um, for her to do that. And but I will say that was a heated, steamy love scene. Yes. Passion. That was passion. It was passion. And so much that passion. was some mm mm stanking. It was stanking. <laughs> and I will also say, um, this is really funny because the premiere viewing party was <laughs> was <laughs> it was presented by Oraquick, which is <laughs> The HIV testing system. So I'm like, the, how ironic that Oraquick was presented, you know, they, they sponsored the viewing party for being Mary Jane. Clearly, somebody was going raw dog on this <laughs> thing because, I mean, I thought about that too. Like, yeah, what kind of message are we sending? Yeah. We got to do better, guys. We got to do better than that. Cats to be more careful. Cats to be more careful. <laughs> so, of course, I mean, let's, see, let's, let's close this out with, do you guys think that... Um, uh, Andre really does love her because you know she sees that he has her address as his password. So that's love. At this point, I do not feel confident in saying that he actually loves her. Is okay. he in lust with her? Yes. Okay. Love, I'm not sure about. Okay. I think he's in love with the idea of what could be and maybe the fun of. I don't know why people cheat. I don't know. Whatever. I think he is um, <laughs> in lust. I don't think that he's in love with her. He just likes the idea of having someone to bang wang with in the shower. Right. I, I don't think I don't think he loves her at this point. I don't I don't see the love. So no. let's move on to news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. Anybody have news? I have news. <laughs> uh, news are in our second episode. We're gonna be having a guest, right? Yes, Latarsha Rose, who plays Dr. Lisa, yes. will be joining Ooh. us on our second podcast. Yes, so. we'll find out. Be sure to tune in for episode two of Being Mary Jane on AfterBuzz TV so you can get the scoop from Dr. Lisa. Right. Maybe we can find out, you know, why she took, them pills, why right? she took all the pills. You know? And has she ever been on a 5150? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, a uh, shout out to um, Being Mary Jane for getting three nominations for NAACP Image Awards. Yes. One for the Outstanding TV Movie, Miniseries, or Dramatic Special. And then also for the Outstanding Actress for Gabrielle Union and Outstanding Actor for My Boyfriend, Omari Hardwick. 
So hopefully they will get those awards. I like how she just took claim on him, like, first episode, oh, like, not even giving any of a No, you know, I've, I've been a fan of Omari Hardwick <laughs> since the next day air. Y'all didn't even know he was in it, did you? Boom. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> you may have had him once, but I got a long time. <laughs> So perfect for this episode. So ladies, where can we find you? <laughs> you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Fania Thomas. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. You can find me on Twitter at Hey Ashley Gray. You can also find me on Instagram at Ashley Nina Marie Gray. What's up? As always, you can find me Megan Thomas on Twitter, Facebook, and that Instagram at Meg Scoop, like scoop of ice cream. Until next week, see y'all later. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>